Nicole Mariotakis out of New York. Uh, good morning to you. You stopped the president on the floor on Wednesday night. What was your pitch? I told him that he needs to go to the border, that he needs to see what I saw and what we heard just a couple of weeks ago from our Customs and Border Patrol agents, and that he needs to support these agents in doing their job because they feel like they've been abandoned by his administration. And quite frankly, the drug cartels have taken over the southern border and they are diverting the CBP attention. Uh, by with this, with this migrant flow of 175,000 individuals per month, and as they are being distracted with the paperwork, with overseeing the facilities, with watching the children that have come unaccompanied, the cartels are operating uh, in the nefarious, nefarious activities uh, over the open and porous parts of our border, gun trafficking, sex trafficking, uh, drug trafficking as well. And it's a very dangerous situation. It's a national security issue. And so I urge the president to go there himself okay. to speak okay. with the CBP. Well, what did he tell you in return? Well, he told me that uh, this is something that they're looking at, they're working on, that he was going to uh, call me in his, you know, he did have the uh, White House counsel call me yesterday and I explained further why I felt it was necessary for the president to go firsthand to see this. Uh, however, I did read last night that uh, it looks like he's looking to just give hundreds of millions of our taxpayer money to these countries, many who, many that are corrupt. I mean, you know, if you look at uh, Honduras, you know, one of the senior your officials was just convicted in a New York court for drug trafficking, and now there are implications that the president of Honduras may have been involved. So this is a, a much bigger issue that really needs the attention of the president of the United States. And as a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, we've been working very uh, diligently to try to make some sense and, and present this uh, to this administration. Congressman, let's zoom out a little bit, because so, you were in the chamber on Wednesday. We watched. Um, and then you had Tim Scott's speech afterwards. And there's two very different um, messages now delivered I think with a similar ter types of in terms of tone and temperament um, but the visions the policies are very different do you think that the Republicans are going to be able to draw enough of a contrast uh, in the next few months or maybe to have some influence on the bill uh, the there's an absolute contrast here. This is a fork in the road for our nation. The question is, are we going to move down a path of socialism, or are we going to preserve our freedoms, our liberties, and the American dream? Now, my parents came to this country as immigrants. Their daughter is a member of the United States Congress. We want to preserve that opportunity for future generations. We want to preserve free market. We want to preserve uh, these freedoms and liberties that we hold so dear. And if you heard what the president is saying, He's looking to change that, and it's very dangerous, whether it be these radical election law changes, wanting to use your taxpayer money to fund political campaigns, anti-policing legislation that would make our streets more dangerous and put more power in the hands of the bad guys, uh, or whether it be a commission to look at packing the court, which is straight out of the socialist handbook. It is how mm -hmm. Hugo Chavez destroyed Venezuela by packing that court from 20 to 32 members, yeah. 45,000 consecutive cases in his uh, ru ruled in his favor. We cannot allow that to happen in the United States of America. And I think the unsustainable spending is a major problem. As Margaret Thatcher said, you run out of other people's money. Um, Government needs to focus on the basics. Yes, my yes, husband transportation is transportation um, infrastructure. My husband is British, and 